we blank? All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the second stream. If you missed it, we just did a video where we're playing Marvel Legendary, the deck building game. We've been getting a lot of questions since Marvel Champions, the living card game got announced at Gen Con 2019 about how does it stack up to Sentinels of the Multiverse and the Legendary deck building game. We, Steven and I had both played some of those games, but not enough to really speak to it. So we're playing them here today on stream. We did the first video, which is the Legendary Deck Builder. We're doing playing Sentinels of the Multiverse here. And then afterwards, we're going to do another stream where we actually talk about all three and kind of talk about the strengths and weaknesses and ups and downs and recommendations. Um, and I got taken to school on the last game by the chat room in saying that there were a lot of Legendary releases still coming out all the time. So I have no idea whether or not Sentinels of the Multiverse is still ongoing and there are expansions coming. So if you play the game and are familiar, I'd love to know in the chat. And then uh, I'll read that, and we'll know whether or not this is something that keeps expanding. But essentially, this is a cooperative game. Not it's a, a cooperative. It's a cooperative game. Uh, look at this too. This is nice. This is nice looking. I like it. So the thing that struck me about Sentinels right off the bat is that it it's a pretty um, in-your-face comic book aesthetic. I mean, it's very much like. Comic books, um, <laughs> Comics. like as much as possible. So Champions has that a bit more of that kind of um, serious art, uh, you know, kind of what you'd expect from a movie poster or something. It's like more of like ah, this is more like animated heroes. Like it's it's wild. It's kind of ludicrous a little bit. It's uh, very super. Some might say. So is it like? Uh, well, look at it. You know the old Batman. TV show? No, that was way more serious than this. The animated series, Batman? No, no, the, the live action TV oh, show. Oh, like the Adam Bam Pow and, and all that. Yeah, I would, I would put it more there, but it, it's also not quite. It's like more that. modern. And it's sleek. like, um, honestly, I mean, I know this is not what, this is not, this is not it. So take it, but it's like that Powerpuff Girls style. You know what I mean? Where it's like. There's a lot of it, the animation like is yeah 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 Everything it's just very like its, in your face yeah. kind of thing it's yeah, what yeah. It, it's what I feel like. Uh, chat has now informed me that Sentinels Multiverse as a card game is now complete. That's awesome. So it exists. You can get it. And it's so good that they actually can just complete a project and be like, we've done it. We love it. And uh, moving on. We were talking about this the other day uh, with a couple of the games, and it was just like I would actually very much like the idea of these games having like a, a finite, like a, a specify, especially the expandable games. We play a lot of card games where it's like, hey, this, even picture Game of Thrones, the LCG. They mm -hmm. kind of were like, hey, in the ANA or AMA with Andrew, it's tough to keep releasing stuff when they're not releasing any new content for the books and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, <laughs> yeah. George. Oh, old George. Anyways, so, you know, picturing a game that uh, has a, a beginning, middle, and end, and it's, you know, two, three, four, five years, and it's just done, uh, it's kind of nice because you play it, you collect it, you have all the stuff, you experience it, and then it's something you can revisit, but it's not something you feel compelled to like stay on top of forever. Like this is perfect. I, I'm looking at it. So did they do this on purpose, you think? Where they literally filled the box exactly where like your the by the final release you kind of had all of these with your tokens and stuff perfectly. Stacked? So I don't know if this is everything. And I do, I do believe these card dividers came with the core set in the way this box is set up. But you think this is the whole core set? No way. All uh, right, let's talk. That's a lot of content. I, I don't think. I don't know. Let's start the game. So this is a pretty quick. This is more like Marvel Champions than Legendary is. Okay. Right off the bat, I've, re I've read the rules. I played it a couple of times. We're going to be controlling heroes. Okay. And we're going to be trying to defeat a villain by getting its hit points to zero. We're going to choose a villain. We're going to choose a scenario, which they call, I believe, an environment. It's going to be out in the middle of the table. It's okay. going to do things every turn. It's going to flip cards up at us, and we're going to adapt. Sound familiar, right? So it's, <laughs> it's, sounds like it's closer than, than Legendary for sure. Um, so the first thing we do is each player selects a hero. Uh, so let me run you down your options. Now, I don't know. There's villains and heroes here. And I think these are villains. These are the environments over here. These the, are the villains. Villains, yeah. and then these are all of our heroes. Yeah, like the chairman is definitely, and the plague rat, those are villains, and the grand warlord boss. You don't want to be the plague rat as a hero? No, all right, so same names. Do and you then want Chrono Ranger, Omnitron X, just stop me when you want it. Yep. Ra, Haka, Mr. Fixer, Tempest, Absolute Zero, Captain America, Bunker. Wait a second, hold on. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> I'm never just mind. kidding, go ahead. Ex Expatriate, uh, Tachyon, or Tachyon, I forget how to say that, Fanatic. The Visionary, Legacy, The Wraith, Unity, 
or the Argent Adept? Let's go Legacy. Legacy. Okay. If this is like a generic America themed hero, it's going to be hilarious. Legacy. Boom. Oh, look at you. Perfect. Good hero for you. All right. He's, is he the guy in the box? Probably. All right. <laughs> look at the. <laughs> Look at the what that says. America's finest. <laughs> uh, yeah. My Got goodness, it. I am a character. All right, or and character. this is. Well, where's my? Oh, there I am. Let's do Unity. I'll do Unity. A, a hacker. This is hilarious. Okay, let's get this out. Oh wait, then we do the thing. Uh, the number of the upper left corner is the starting hit point. So twenty six. Thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Then we select a villain in an environment. All right, so I want to play against misinformation. That's hilarious. Let's do that. <laughs> that is funny. Okay. This, I believe, is misinformation. Yep. Okay. Here's misinformation. There's some things that might matter. And then we choose an environment. And let's, That's hilarious. Let's do the block. Jenny from the block on this one. Misinformation from the block. From the block. Right. I'm still I'm still misinformation from the block. I'm sorry for that. Um, follow the instructions in the setup section of the villain character card. Okay, this is our villain character card. Nope, wrong. This is our villain character card. Setup. Can you do what that says? I'll do it and I'll read it. Setup. At the start of the game, put misinformation's villain character cards into play. Demure office worker side up. Okay. Boom. Demure office worker. There she is. So she, she's got an alter ego like uh -huh. Chip. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, reveal cards from the top of the villain deck until one diversion card is revealed. So I'm going to shuffle this. because Yeah, I that's it. fair. And uh, does this have a... Yeah, this is Demir Office Worker side as well. Cool. Uh, so reveal cards until a diversion card is revealed. Put it into play. Shuffle the other reveal cards back into the deck. All right. So let's do this. I'm looking for a diversion. Diversionary tactics? Is that a diversion? Does it say... I don't is think there going to so. be a... It'll say, yeah, that's all one shot and stuff. Is oh that right? Goodness. Ongoing. I don't. I. I think a diversion is is not going to be in the trades there. I mean, just yeah. Oh my gosh! It's a diversion. All right. It's immediately wrong. So threat to the president. The diversion. Uh, at the end of the villain turn, the player with the most cards in play must destroy one of their non-character cards. At the start of the villain turn, the players may destroy eight. That's the number of players too. Non-character hero cards. If they do destroy this card. Okay, so one of these. This is very similar, man. This is very similar. Okay, following the instructions of the villain. Each player draws, wait, what am I doing with the environment? Am I just? Uh... It's like its own deck, like the villain here. Okay, I'll we'll put it in there. You mean the main scheme? The main scheme. And then these are all on the right sides, right? So this actually matters for the gameplay. And then it can flip over, because it changes. Once she's misinformation. Yeah. Uh, so the gameplay says at the start of the villain turn, if there are the number of heroes minus one or more clue cards in play, flip misinformation's villain character cards. Okay. At the end of the villain turn, destroy X hero ongoing or equipment cards where X is the number of diversion cards in play. This is going to be a disastrous one for us. Okay, so let's shuffle our hero decks next. Do we have any uh, shuffle our hero decks? Do you have yours shuffled here? My hero deck, yep. I will say the card quality of this is on the lower end of yep. my hands. Well, and this was a maybe the first title from Greater Than Games. Super indie, right? Right. I, I feel like this was like early on for them, and it was a. It's I think it was an underground Kickstarter. smash. Was it a Kickstarter? From what I understand, I I definitely saw some Sentinel stuff on Kickstarter. Well, it could, it could have definitely. been like expansions or something. Got my hands in a million gaming. And you know pots. what? Yeah, I think think the art style, just the quality. I feel like we're dealing with an indie comic right now. Yeah. Which is kind of like it feels very much that way. Thematic in a way. I mean, we we basically are doing that exact thing, Sentinel comics. You know. Uh, Brennan's saying that one thing that's tricky about Sentinels is it's primarily designed for three to five players. When oh, yeah. he and his wife play, they each take two heroes. Should we take two? I'm not ready for that. Okay. Well, at least we, get a we feel can try. We get a feel for it. But I feel like we just need to understand how this is functioning, even if we get smashed, which is likely. Can you play it with two players? Is that even legal? I think so. You have the top of the box. All right. Draw the top four cards of your hero deck. All right. 
One, two. <laughs> this Sorry, it's, awesome. uh, it's a lot of reading. Oh, man. Okay, reduce the uh, work together to reduce the villain to zero hit points. That's okay. what we're trying to do. And the hit points are bracket 45. 45. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so we begin the game with a villain turn. Follow all start of turn instructions on the villain character card and any other villain cards in play. Play the top card of the villain deck, then follow all end of turn instructions on the villain character card. And other villain, so it makes sense. So we start the villain turn, flip it up. Hold on, first of all, do we have at the start of the villain turn anything? Uh, end what does of. What does it say? Start of the turn, what does it say? If there are basically one clue cards in play, there are no clue cards in play. None. Uh, okay. Then you can flip to misinformation. And then advance only matters if we want to get completely wrecked. Yeah, we won't do that. We don't no. want to do that. All right, give me a flip. All right, ready? Let's read this thing. Diversionary tactics, one shot. Reveal the top <laughs> top X cards, or hero cards. So the top two cards yeah. of the villain deck. Put any revealed diversion cards into play. That's not the villain deck. That's the villain deck. Uh, put any diversion cards into play. No diversion. No diversion. Shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck. Play the top card of the villain deck. So discard the other cards. Then you shuffle all the discard back into the deck. And then you play the top card of the villain deck again because so it's essentially surged. It surged for sure. So that could be really that could be really bad. Okay, play the top card of the villain deck. Here we go. Ha! Ah! Diversionary tactics. Same thing. Oh so my reveal gosh. two, and we're putting looking for a diversion, which we got one. We this got time. one. Uh, which is cat stuck in a tree. It's got ten health, I presume, is what that is. I don't know. At the yeah. end of the villain turn, this card deals uh, two minus two hero targets. Zero. With the highest hit points. Three million. So maybe this doesn't do anything because we're on two player. Because it's designed for three to five. Let's just pick another hero. You're going to play two heroes? Yeah. Some, someone said that when you play two player, that one player can play two heroes, basically. You want to play two? Yeah, I don't want to play two. I'll, I'll, play I'll, two. I'll deal with the villain cards. You I'll deal with the two. two decks. I'll be Mr. Fixer over here. That's what someone was saying. They, they love to play. Okay, good. He looks like your kind of cat. Both of these look like your kind of characters. Thanks. Like, if, if you were playing Netrunner, these would be two of your runners. Yeah, 100%. Guy with broom and, and guy yeah. with goggles and D-rag. Yeah, 100%. All right, so basically, this card deals one target uh, with the highest HP, three melee damage. 28, 26, it's you. Yep. And It'll this at is the end of the at turn. the end of the villain turn. And then do we draw another one after that? Nope. So this says, reveal the top, so it should be three villain cards. Put any revealed diversion cards we'll, in we'll the play. It's fine. Discard the other revealed cards, shuffle the villain trash into the villain deck, and then... Oh. And play the top card of the villain deck. Again. So we do it again. It's like a bad... It's bad times. Another reality's debt. One shot. Each player must either discard their hand or destroy all of their cards. I'll do that one. Destroy all their cards? Yeah, we yeah. don't have any. It's a, we're, we can make a false choice, I think, in this game. Yep. It doesn't say if you can't. It doesn't say that, Zach. All right, so then we go to the hero turn. Start, start of the hero turn. Uh, play a hero card. You can use a power. You can draw a hero card, and you can end the hero turn. So we can do 10 damage here to get this thing. This is a side scheme, you basically. This thing. Yeah, sorry. Be good. I just needed to grab my second hero because I'm such a boss. Do you have start of hero turn things? Power? I have a power, but I can... Do stuff first. You can use a power, you can play a hero card, you can draw a hero card, and then you end your turn. If you don't use a power or play a hero card, you get to draw two. So I if I true. play, I get to play a card, though. Yes, one card. Hmm. Okay. Uh, play a card, use a power, draw a card. All phases are optional. If you neither play a card nor use a power, you may draw two cards instead of one. Mm, okay, let's do this. I'm going to play Fortitude, ongoing. I reduce damage dealt to me by one. Uh, and then I'll use my power until the start of my next turn and increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. Yeah, you need some damage. Look at these damage boys. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Speaking of clunky. <laughs> Give it. Clunkity clunk. Okay, so you took three from the end of the thing. Ding, ding, ding. From this thing. Oh, at the end of the villain thing? Yeah. Yeah. And you started your turn, and then your first thing is using a power, is that right? Well, I'm going to... I played Fortitude. Okay. So 
all future damage dealt to me is minus one. Great. And then I galvanize until the start of my next turn, increase damage dealt by heroes by one. Okay. So your heroes do plus one. Cool. And I only get to play one card, right? Yep, one card, one uh, and then, thing, and then the other thing. And then I draw a card, and then it's your turn. No. Oh, yeah, it is. So we all take our turns. Okay, I get it. I thought it would go back to the villain every time. I was like, we're going to get wrecked. Okay, so I've got a power. Deal one target, one melee damage. So that'll be two instead. What is, why, what is this? What is the back of these cards about? I have no idea. Is that what happens when you go away? Yes, it is. I read about this. So when you get defeated, during your turn, you can buff your allies. Uh, you're like an inspiring force on the board. That's pretty smart. Yeah, that's one of the things people are concerned about in Champions because you can just mid-game get defeated and then you're just sitting out while the rest of your friends are playing a game. Yep. Okay, uh, two or fewer when this current player turn the... Oh my gosh, how cool. I get this. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, so we're going to play a pipe wrench. Gah! <laughs> Increase damage dealt by one. Reduce damage dealt to me by one. And when it enters play, I return all of the tool cards to my hand. I have a lot of tool cards in hand, so I'm going to be whipping out a bunch of different tools is my, my guess. Nice. So that's my first is play a card. Then I'm going to use a power, which is deal one melee damage. It's going to be plus one for the pipe wrench. So let's do two. Are we, are we ignoring side schemes or are we... Oh, that's, we have three heroes now. So it's doing three damage at the end of every villain phase. We should probably get rid of that, shouldn't we? Well, and I'm not sure we can damage misinformation. That may be true, because she's not, she's totes normal. Yeah. She didn't have a health stat. Okay. Well, let's put it here. I'll bet we can. No, but could we? Maybe not. All right, there's two, and then I'll draw a card. Okay. Good. Here is trash into their player's hands. Cool. Okay. And then Unity. I have a power. Destroy one equipment card. If I do, put a mechanical golem from hand into play. Mm. I don't have a mechanical golem. Bummer, dude. So this is interesting. It's similar in some ways to Champions and different in a lot of other ways. All right, I'm going to start with a supply crate. And this card enters play, draw a card. Then, I don't want to do a power. I need that golem. I definitely like am used to champions being able to play multiple cards. Yeah. I was starting to think tough. about how I would string these together. It's, it's really way tough. more restricted in that way. And I can't use a hero power, so I will draw a card to finish my turn. And that's that. Then we go to the environment, start of the environment phase, play an environment card. The block, here we go. Inmate, six. Increase damage dealt by inmates by one. At the start of the environment turn, destroy the agent with the highest hit points. We don't see any agents, do you? I don't know what an agent is. It might be, they might be allies we could play, or it might be in the sure. Inmate, 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 agent, they're in here. Boom, they're in the block. Okay, and now we go back to the uh, end of the environment. Is there anything on the end of the environment? phase that happens? Mm. No, end of villain turn, end of villain turn, start of villain turn. Oh. All right, so that's the round. So go back to the start of the villain turn. All right, so start of the villain turn, play, we'll play a villain, a villain card. card. It's an ongoing, it's a clue. Increase damage dealt by villain targets by one. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no diversion cards in play, play the top card of the villain deck. There are diversion cards. Yep. So that's a clue. Increase damage dealt by villain targets by one. Yep. At the start of the, uh, villain, start of the villain turn, if there are so three, it's three minus, minus one, one, so two or more clue cards in play, she comes out, and there's only one. Yeah, and that was at the start of the villain turn, so it's not a big deal. And does the we play the card after the start of the villain phase? Yeah. So, so. a second clue is going to have to come out, and then the turn after that, she'll she'll happen. Yep. Um, at the end of the villain turn, destroy ooh. X hero ongoing or equipment cards where X is the number of diversion cards in play. Ah, uh, destroy two? Two cards? Yeah. Sorry about you. I mean, 42 is a week. Come on. It's, it's not, not an equipment. Oh, my gosh. So oh, it's an ongoing. Yeah, it could okay. be that. Um, I'll take a pipe wrench if you'll take that fortitude out of here. Because this is going to give me two cards at the beginning of the yeah, turn. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but before that happens, right, uh, let's go into phase, right? 
so this triggers and whatever triggers. I'm beginning um, to see some limitations. Yeah. This is a lot to keep track of. Player with the most cards in play uh, must destroy one of their non-character cards. Hmm. That's not good. All the cards we play do nothing. Cool. Okay, so I see how this works. So we're going to lose all three of these cards. <laughs> All right, that's I fine. Can, I can already pretty much tell you what I'm thinking about, <laughs> about this game. <laughs> all right, cool. Cool, that's fine. So did we did we do all of this at the start of the villain phase? Did we get all of this? So we've got to reference this guy at the start of the villain turn. If they do that thing, at the start of the villain turn, the players may destroy three non-character hero cards if they do destroy this card. Oh, let's just do that. Right? That's how we do that. Oh, each destroy one. Each destroy one. And it gets rid of it. And this. then we get rid of it, and then we don't lose them to the so next thing. I'm going to put this up here. Yeah, totally fine good. with that. Then at the start of the villain turn, if there are no diversion cards in play, play top card. That doesn't matter. So all is well. We're all good. Deals. Yeah, and then at the end of the villain phase, this card deals three minus two. So one target with the highest HP, which is me, three damage. So I'll take three. Any other end of villain phase things? I don't think so. Destroy X ongoing or equipment, which doesn't matter because we did that to clear the thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So then it comes back to us. Yeah. I'm gonna not play an upgrade because I guess is that still that, yeah. that's gone now, right? Yeah. So maybe we could. I'm, I want to get rid of that thing. This is the thing that's gonna keep hitting us. So the number of diversion cards that are in play are how many equipment or ongoing effects we're going to lose. So there's going to be one gone. I can, you know, we're going to have to choose. All right, how about we do this? If there's uh, going to be you or and me. Did you boost your damage by one? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to play back fist to strike. Uh, I deal four damage to a target, so I'll hit this for four. Oh, nice. Well, in. And then I'll use a power. All your stuff is plus one. And then I draw a card and go ahead. Okay. Then I go to Mr. Fixer. And someone, Bob says, this game is like, read every card and then read all these new cards that came into play. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, um, one thing that is, and apparently this got better later, later on the game, and they put out tokens to mark a lot of stuff, but the amount of stuff that you have to, even on this first turn, remember seems very high. Okay, and I have to do these in order, right? So play hero card is the first thing. Trash into their players' hands. Okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to hand this to you. Let's project after Mr. Fixer damages a target. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. We're uh, for those watching that I'm assuming are also interested in champions. We're deep into the prototyping process for our compatible tokens, and John just put a couple on my computer that are most recent updates, off hot off the press. Beep, beep. Okay, so that's going to matter. That's going to matter. Whenever it deals damage, reduce all damage dealt by that target by one until the start of your next turn. Man, we can't fight misinformation yet. Nope. But if you do four damage, we can get rid of this diversion. <laughs> Which is the... the X in this equation. Yeah, it is the X in this equation. Um, I'm not going to play a card. I will use a power to deal one target, one melee damage. Let's do that to our friend Cat Stuck in a Tree. All right. I mean, this is, you, and you can do damage here, I imagine, right, as well. Yeah, I it assume. Would, it would ha you would have to be able to do that. It's not like we can scheme. Um, and that's, then I draw a card to finish my turn. Oh, this is great. Cool. That's fine. And then we go over to Unity, which unfortunately this did not work. Um, Apparently this is a digital version of Sentinels that people really love. Okay. It keeps track of all the stuff and automatically does the end of round, beginning of round thing. Okay, let's do a brainstorm. Draw two cards. Okay. And then Unity deals three targets, one lightning damage each. So one target, two target. Okay. And I, we still don't think we can hurt Miss. They said we can't hurt her while she's in this version. So it's like the opposite of what we do in Champions. When we go to alter ego mode, they can't attack us. Yeah. 
right. So now I feel what that's like. Uh, Ryan Rohan asking, would the tokens for champions be all together in a set similar to Heroes of the Grid? Uh, it's in, it's, it'll be more like Arkham. There's like player sets and villain sets. There's like, sets and villain sets. There's three skews right now. Um, there's the villain stuff. There's the hero stuff, tokens-wise. And then there's a board that works for everything. Heroes and villain and main scheme. So it's all... And side schemes. And side schemes, if you want to really go. <laughs> if you really want to go. Um, power, destroy an equipment card. If you do, put a mechanical golem into play. No equipment out, so I'm not going to use that. And then draw a card at the end of my turn. And uh, that's the end. OK, so then the environment turn. Start of the environment turn. Play an environment card. Wait, do we have, at the start of the environment turn, destroy the agent with the highest hit points. There are no agents. There are no agents, OK. You know, Agents the... help us, you know. Prison Riot. When this card is play, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until three minus one, two inmates are revealed. Discard the others, so we'll get two inmates. Yikes. And then I presume this goes to discard after it's resolved. At the end of the environment turn, please. Sorry. I'm getting angsty. <laughs> There's Agents. We want Agents. This is kind of cool. Yeah. It's cool because there's, there's good and bad in the deck, right? You're, yeah. There's literally the, the, the block is the prison. Oh, my gosh. It's just funny. I'm like, uh, oh, there's an inmate. OK. So these all go to the discard pile. Including that card? Discard yeah. the other revealed cards. And then these two, put them into play. Discard the other revealed cards. OK. The start of the environment turn. Start of the environment turn. I have a feeling that's going to start getting bad. Yeah. OK, and this goes. OK, all right. Environment done. OK. Into the environment phase. And in start, 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 done. OK, that's it. Are these guys supposed to attack or anything? I don't think so. Well, it says increase damage dealt by inmates by one. Well, is there an inmate that does damage like this guy? This card deals the non inmate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We got smart, it. Smart, smart guy, huh? Uh, played a few games. Villain turn. Start of the villain turn. Uh, do we have any start of villain turn triggers? At start of the villain turn, if there are there are not clues in play to switch her, so that doesn't happen. The yep. other is at the end. So this is at the end, and this is at the start of the villain turn. If there are no diversion cards in play, which there's one, so we're fine. So we don't really want to clear it quite yet. OK, so then we go to the villain deck. Let's play a clue. Misplaced memo. If a non-hero target with the lowest hit points, the non-hero target with the lowest hit points is immune to damage, time craze prisoner. OK. Yeah. At the start of the villain turn, each hero tar target deals itself two psychic damage. OK. So we'll take two at the start of the villain turn forever. Until that's gone. Or however that happens. I don't even know. If ever. If ever. Now we go to the hero turn. It's you. Uh, there's end of stuff, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. At the end of the villain turn, destroy X. So we have no cards in place, so nothing gets destroyed. That was our master plan. Uh, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals me three damage. So. Well, how many hit points you got left there? Uh, 29. All, all right. right. Uh, Next turn, I'll start taking it. 26 is what I'm at. All right, I'm at 28 here. So all right, I'll so it's 20. you. How about that? How about that? OK. So then my turn? Yeah. Start. Do you have any start of uh, your mm, turn no. triggers? Mm -mm. Unfortunately not. I'm going to start calling for it like that, because I feel like that is the name of this game. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's do this. Sorry. You good. I'm going to play Bolster Allies. Every hero draws a card. Oh, hey, thanks. I feel like you might like that. And then I'm going to make it where our, your heroes do plus one damage this round. Oh. Godspeed. Thanks. And then I draw a card. OK. And so she's going to transform next turn, because we've got two clues yep. out, yeah? And then we can start fighting her. So we need to start. I think we leave this diversion up. If you're going to upgrade with anything, we need to get rid of it. Yeah. That's really the question, isn't it? Damage just uh, by two. If there's a copy of the card, you may put it into play now. 
OK, so I'll start here. Let's play a card, um, Overdrive. I can use the Strike Power twice this turn. Strike Power? Then we'll use the Strike Power twice oh, nice. and deal two damage and two damage because you buffed me. Thank you for that, Zach. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, what do you think? Like this kind of a thing? Two and two more? You don't want to get rid of that version? I will. You want to do it? I don't know. Let's what, do it. Why are you scared of it? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Because if there's no diversions, we reveal the top of the villain card. Something, well, we got one. Something said that at some point. All right. That's not a diversion. It's a clue. Yeah, that's right. Um, then I draw a card. OK. And then over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, do I have to play the equipment to destroy it? What do you think? It says destroy one equipment card. Can I destroy it from my hand, or does it have to be in play? I assume it'd have to be in play. OK. Construction pylon into play. It gives me access to a power. Put up to two mechanical golems from hand into play and destroy this card. Mechanical golem, mechanical golem. Wow. So that was my play and my power. And then I'll draw. Reduce damage dealt to this card by one. At the end of your turn, this card deals one target, three energy damage. Ha! All right. So that does. that's going to happen twice. So let's do three. You want to just knock that guy out? Yep. That sounds like a plan. Do I have to manage the tokens? I don't. I find myself making those kind of plays a yeah, lot these that, days that in games. It doesn't matter. So yeah, it'd be easier if I just removed all your dice here. And then I bought my, uh, I got a B bot there. OK, and then we go to the environment phase. This boy flips. It's another time crazed prisoner. So at the start, the card deals the, oh wait, we need to do that first. At the start of the environment turn, destroy the agent. Nope. At the start of the environment turn, this card deals the non-inmate target with the second highest hit points. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like exclude A, include B, exclude C. OK. And then deals the non-inmate target, which would be like any of us? Yeah, sure. Or are they only, is only enemies are targets? Non-inmate target with the second highest hit points, or maybe that's everything, uh, where x equals the number of cards in the environment trash. Oh my gosh. Nine. So who has the second highest hit points? I have a bad feeling about this. 26. <laughs> 25. 26. 26. Uh, anything on the board that has second highest? No. Nope. OK. <laughs> so now we decide we tie break on our own terms. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is it Mr. Fixer the sec technically second, or is he third? He's third. I don't know. I actually don't know how this game handles that. Well, I'll just take nine. Yeah, that it's, seems fine. It's the kind of hero I am. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, America. <laughs> Justice always wins. OK, and then this boy comes out. So that's going to happen twice next turn. So these guys have got to go. But isn't there something that's, yeah. Oh my gosh. This is going to be disastrously bad. So we can't deal with either of those. Yeah, it seems that's the case. Well, how do we get rid of these clues? I, well, she's going to about to flip over when she gets too many clues. OK, start of the villain turn. Do we have start of villain turn triggers? Oh, we're on villains? Yes, we do. Uh, at start of the villain turn, if there are enough clues, then she flips over into her villain side. Uh, villain character cards. So this flips as well. At the start of the villain turn, each hero target deals itself two psychic damage. So two to everybody. Great. Um, now, it flipped. I, it says at the start of the villain turn, destroy a clue card. If you do, each hero target deals itself two sonic damage. So yeah, we get to destroy, destroy a clue card. I, I think so. I mean, we can, I assume it's so. we can look it up. That does seem, it does seem relevant. Um, villain, where, where do we even look for that? Uh, I'm just going to say we destroy it. Yeah, that seems good. Let's just keep keep on rolling. Let's roll it. I'm going to destroy the one that was really bad for us. You know what I mean? Any cards with hit points is a target. Okay, cool. Keep that in mind. So we can now attack these guys if we really want to. Um, the first person that deals misinformation and damage each round takes a damage. Be aware. At the end of the villain turn, misinformation deals uh, one target with the lowest HP two psychic damage. So the first person to hit her takes one, and whoever has the lowest health at the end of each round takes two. Okay. And at the start of each turn where she's out, 
two or a clue gets destroyed. Okay. Cool. All right, we got it. Did we get there? Are we done? And then we deal a card. That was just all all That's right. pomp and circumstance. That's right. Diplomatic Envoy Diversion. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals one target with the highest HP, two melee, and two energy damage each. There's no way I can keep up with this thing. This game? There's too, there's too many words. Yeah, your head hurts, right? All right, so here's what I'm going to vote on we do. <laughs> I say we wrap this up right now. We come back for the next video, which is comparing Sentinels and Legendary to Champions. And then we squeak in a game of Champions. Can we squeak? What time is it? 4.15. Yeah, we can do that, I think. I think we can squeak. I have a... So here's... Uh, I'll do that in my next video. I'll tell you why I'm so excited about it. Well, something. hold on. Let me, let me cl close this up. So this... What do you? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts here? Do you feel the same way? Absolutely. I mean, uh, so someone was saying that the they put out the app version. The app did incredibly well because it manages all this for mm -hmm. you. And I can see it being awesome. It's kind of like Warhammer Champions in that way. Yep. Where, where it's, it's like, like so much. To, uh, Champions was light. Mm -hmm. Warhammer Champions was light compared to this. Um, someone said, "That's so funny." <laughs> like, can I read these comments to you? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Someone says, oh, called it. And then the next guy says, Sentinels of Multiverse, the tracking game. One and done. My friends hate this game. <laughs> Bob Benton says, called it. Headache. And then Vincent says, dude, lol, this is exactly what I did when I played Sentinels. I was like, in quotes, forget it. <laughs> Super good. Oh, man. Oh, man. Great. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're not so, having one. Yeah, here. I mean, the thing about this, I get it. Um, if uh, people that like really, I played, I played, I used to work in stores on Sundays, which is board game day, mm -hmm. and I played games with people that love this kind of game, which is like every card is a book. It's very chunky, and it's very, it's very chunky. And I have a lot of thoughts about this game. I just had, a, I have a lot of trouble actually appreciating the game. I feel like I'm just trying to stay afloat with the rules, and I can't actually make decisions in the game. It reminds me a little bit of, uh, in the same way, Legend of the Five Rings, the LCG, mm -hmm. which is like it's so chunky that it, it takes you have to play 10, 15 times before you're familiar enough with the engine mm -hmm. to really play the game. And there are some people that love that. And eventually you know how the villains work, and it's like, okay, I know that Miss, you just know that like once there's two clues, it flips, and then it's going to be removing yeah. schemes. So like once you eventually learn the villain, you don't have to read as much because you just know how it works. But like to me, like I, I picture a game like Infinity, a miniatures game, and it's like it's one thing when you ha like obviously once you learn it enough, you can actually play the game, right? It, it's how that works too, right? Where it's like there's a first 10 games is like you're reading a 200 page rulebook as you play and like figuring it out but like the upside to card games to me is that they're cards and they have text on them right so like it shouldn't be that like you know what I mean like you shouldn't a, a, feel like you're reading through a manual yeah while you're playing the it's, game yeah I, I feel like and I get it they're trying to have these static effects that like at the start of, it, at the end of the thing is it's not hard no there are three things at the start during and at the end and as long as you put those in the right order and read them all and resolve them, you've done the game correctly. I just can't think of any kind of strategies that I'm trying to pay attention to because I'm trying to just manage the game. Yeah, and you're accurately. trying to understand when you're at the start or at the end or mm -hmm. when you're dealing damage or, or whatnot. And that's where, like, it, because of the way the game's structured, right, it's not like you play a card and do it and resolve it. Or, like, even if it said, like, every, like the, every time she takes damage, she does one back. It's like, okay, I can get that. Mm-hmm. It's like I have to do something for this to trigger instead of just like the game state is making me trigger all these things. This is like, actually, this is a cooperative version of the reason that I would find myself very frustrated with like Game of Thrones. Where it's like, okay, there's 17 things on the board and I have to be on all of them or I'm going to make the wrong decision and lose. All right, um, let's close this one up and then uh, do a quick combo about the, the Marvel games, or I'm sorry, the superhero games as they sit. I don't think Versus is a part of the conversation. It's a, co or it's a competitive game. If you want to play a competitive game with superheroes, it seems like the right choice, right? Yeah, so the, the, other, the games we haven't covered yet are Versus and Dice Masters. Oh, right and on. And Hero Clicks is a... I've played, some, I've played plenty of Hero Clicks. I think Hero Clicks is just fine. It's just um, fine. The complaint I always hear about. Let's talk about this in the next video. Hero Clicks oh, is. Just, we'll talk about all the Marvel games. We've talked also, about. Also, these so these games are are much older too. 
is this the thing. Is, it's oh. like you would expect that Marvel Champions coming in and being designed in 2019 is going to feel newer, more more streamlined, more... Um, you know, sure. we've had a lot of time to figure out how to do even this better. Even Legendary, it was like the template on cards is way better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. it was, I couldn't even read the names. So, In a lot uh, of ways, is Champions just a better version of this engine? It's like a 3.0. 3. This yeah. was like point, 0. 0.1. Or well, 0. They, were the, they were the groundbreakers. I remember when this. it came out. I remember playing it and being like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, it's times change. Times change. Uh, Ryan Garcia asking, did we go over Legendary? So, we're about to cut this video, and we'll do another one where we're talking about Legendary, Sentinels, Champions, and we're also going to even throw in some Dice Master slash Hero Clicks. Have you played Dice Masters? Yeah, I have played Dice Master. I've played plenty of Hero Clicks. Dice Masters was Heck the... Uh, let's, let's say, you go, Bryce, you good on the cutting us out of here? All right, guys, we will be back. Uh, come and join us for a quick discussion, then we're going to try to squeak in one game of Marvel Champions. We'll maybe put the heroes up for vote or something. See what we want to play with. All right, Spider-Man Protection. Come on back.